What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and in this video I'm checking out this, the Portkey's LH5P 5.5 inch on camera monitor. It's a monitor that I've seen a lot of people using paired with higher end cameras like REDS and the fancier of the Blackmagic range. It's not outrageously expensive either so I wanted to see what the fuss was all about. As usual, I'll go through the build quality, the features, the value for money, the user experience, and of course I'll timestamp all of those things so you can skip to the bit you want. Just to say straight away, I'm going to be giving away this exact copy of the LH5P, and I can do this because this channel is powered by my Patreon backers. It's a non-profit thing, the idea being that with any funds from Patreon I can buy equipment, review it, and then gift it away to my backers. It's just a really elegant way of improving my content, and I will pop the details below. I'll ship it to you wherever you are, as long as it's somewhere globally that I can ship it to you. And as this is a juicier thing to give away, I'm gonna leave it rolling for a month or two, just to kind of give you know people more time to enter. So anyway, what is this? Okay, right, features, there are quite a lot, so I'm gonna power on. In the bundle, you get the monitor, obviously, a protective case, a USB for uploading firmware, and a few different cables for power and audio. It has a touchscreen, which I appreciate. It's not a 100% sort of seamless experience like it would be on, say, an iPad Pro, but I'll get into this in a bit. Overall, it's a good thing and I appreciate having a touchscreen. I've actually been using the OCT7 for quite a while now and I really like it, but I've always felt like it's missing touchscreen operation. The LH5P is really quite bright. It pumps out 1700 nits, which is pretty bright, although not class leading, but needless to say, I'd be happy shooting with it outdoors in the bright sunshine. Just to put that brightness in perspective, You've got the small HD 503 Ultra Bright, which pumps out 2200 nits, which is really bright, but it is four times the price. And then at the more budget end, you've got something like the OCT5, which pumps out only 450 nits, but then it's about half the price. So make of that what you will. Poor keys have been smart not to advertise this as a true 10 bit panel because it's not. It's 8 bit plus two using a technique called FRC, frame rate control. What's the difference between frame rate control and 10-bit? Well, honestly, almost none whatsoever. Please don't be the guy who complains that a $400 monitor isn't true 10-bit. FRC gives you 99% the same results as true 10-bit. If you want a true 10-bit display, be prepared to feel like a pelican because you're gonna have a big bill in front of your face. The LH5P is HD, 1920 by 1080, and that's more than enough resolution for me for a display of this size. That gives you tons of pixel density and the images definitely look sharp. It comes with loads of conversion lookup tables for when you're shooting log on your camera and most camera brands are covered and I really appreciate this. However, I usually prefer to upload my own lookup tables, but more on that in a bit. When it comes to exposure and focus tools, this monitor has almost everything you can think of. Waveforms, false color, zebras, peaking, vector scope, the list goes on and on and on, and feature-wise, this is a very rich monitor. It accepts a 4K signal and outputs a 4K signal as well via HDMI. It also has Wi-Fi connectivity. Let's talk about that. Yes, this monitor allows you to connect your camera via Wi-Fi and then unlocks some of the functionality that you would have on your camera. A few weeks before filming this, Portkeys sent a firmware update which gives you compatibility for some of the newer Sony cameras, namely the Sony a7S III that I'm shooting on and the a7 IV that I also use. My advice, definitely check the list of compatible cameras for the Wi-Fi functionality because, I don't know, whenever you're watching this, it might not be compatible. So connecting via Wi-Fi gives you the basic camera controls, iris, ISO, shutter speed, record, and a few other things. Most of this works well, there are a few functions that don't. And the operation of this on the whole is a little on the clunky side. My main complaint though is that having this as a feature is nice, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't really make a lot of sense. For me anyway. Personally, I would rather just dial in my settings on my camera. I've got all my custom buttons under my fingers where I know they are. Using the controls on screen for me slows me down and that's why personally I'm not going to be using this feature. If this allowed you to use the monitor without a USB cable in true wireless fashion with minimal latency, I would be singing its praises. But alas, 
I suppose you could pair this with something like a Cine Eye wireless HDMI system for true wireless operation, but then that's an additional expense. I don't know. I suppose the takeaway from this is that portkeys are trying really hard to give us all the features possible. That's clear and we, we have to appreciate that and you know they are really on it when it comes to firmware updates so I wouldn't be surprised if we see more improvements in future. So now looking at the build quality, user interface and user experience, it weighs 250 grams which is fairly light but honestly it's a little heavier than I was expecting. Probably the way I would put it is reassuringly, it's a reassuring weight. Obviously it's really small and it feels good in the hands, it's got an aluminium body which is nice and the screen is it's tempered glass and it's edge to edge which I really like. I found the feel of the battery mount a little odd. I'm not always sure if the battery is properly in. I like a good assertive click and I don't get it. However the button to release the battery does have a good feel to it. The user experience is really important to me with this kind of product and honestly I found it a little odd. It just has a slightly kind of quirky feel and it's not always the most intuitive. For starters, when I adjust the tint control, I can see the changes, but then when I apply a lookup table, it overrides the tint adjustment. Also, pressing the back button on top of the monitor disables the lookup table for some reason. Not sure why. Another quirk is that when you use the Luma waveform function to judge your exposure, it always displays what's happening on screen. If you're shooting in log, it displays the low contrast image, but when you apply a LUT, it displays the full contrast. And that's fine, but it would have been really useful if we had the option to choose what the waveform displays, either the log or the converted footage. And on that note, the LUTs, in my opinion, add way too much contrast. You can be shooting, and when you look at the waveform, there'll often be a lot sort of above 100 IRE and way below 100 IRE, and that's not a realistic conversion. You just wouldn't usually grade that way, and I found that it made judging your exposure a little bit more tricky. Just to note, I didn't have this issue when using a linear gamma on the camera and obviously not using a log conversion, so the problem must lie with the log conversion on the monitor. Using the horizontal and vertical flip controls flips everything, including the menu so that all the text is backwards or upside down and tricky to read. So then you have to toggle to flip the on-screen display to flip the text the right way around. Why not automatically flip the on-screen display so that you can still read the text initially and then have the option to flip it? It's just a quirky way to go about it. I actually contacted Portkeys about these things and they said, mm, yep, that's what happens. And you know what? I keep coming back to the word quirky, quirky, quirk, quirky, quirky, quirks. And despite all those things, I found the user experience quirks kind of charming. Is that weird? I will say I really like the feel of the buttons on the top of the screen and I found that as soon as I programmed in the ones on the left hand side to different uh, exposure tools I found I was toggling them without looking and it was just handy. The buttons on the top right however I'm not completely sure exactly what they're doing but it doesn't matter because the touch screen actually works pretty well for this kind of operation. It's not iPad Pro in terms of how responsive it is but it works well enough. I actually really like the combination of buttons and a touchscreen. Usually with most monitors, it's one or the other. So I appreciate that. It has a fan, which is quiet to the point of not being able to hear it at all. However, you can switch it to high mode, which becomes hilariously noisy. Let me show you. And I'm assuming that most people who are using this are probably gonna want to keep it to, you know, on its low setting, unless you're in, I don't know, some sort of really hot place. When it comes to battery life, I can't really comment on this because it depends on the quality and capacity of the batteries you're using. However, I've been out using it for hours actually and uh, it hasn't died on me yet so I'm, I'm convinced that it, it just it sips rather than gulps. So overall, slightly quirky user experience, albeit pretty good. So how does it look? in the real world. Overall, I found that using the inbuilt conversion LUTs with S-Log3 gave me a very contrasty image that leaned slightly to the green. I definitely preferred the look once I'd uploaded a few of my favorite lookup tables, although it still added 
too much contrast in my opinion. It's really easy to upload your favourite lookup tables using the USB stick that comes with the monitor. Just copy the LUTs into the LUT folder on the USB, plug into the monitor and transfer them. The really nice thing about this is those lookup tables live on the internal memory of the monitor, which is so nice. So many monitors out there, you have to use an SD card and the SD card just lives in the monitor and that's kind of annoying. So internal storage, huge thumbs up, and why wouldn't they do this? Because those LUT files are tiny. Anyway, next, value for money. Well, I put it in the quite good value category. Undeniably, you get quite a bit for your money. The list of features is huge, and it's decently made. However, it does cost quite a bit more than some of the other monitors of this size on the market, and I have found a few quirks. Next it's time for the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So on with the pros, and it's really compact and really well built. It has great spec and huge potential. I can see why guys are using it with cinema cameras because it just does everything. As I mentioned, I think this is quite good value. Not jaw-dropping because it's not perfect. The image is really nice and detailed, you get plenty of pixel density. One trump card that this monitor has is it has great brightness compared to the alternatives. I love the internal storage of lookup tables. I wish all manufacturers would do this, those files are so tiny. That wireless control is a cool feature, albeit not perfect, and for me, it's kind of redundant. And then onto the cons, and it has a slightly quirky UI. That weird thing with the H flip, the tint override, and the back button disables the LUT. Just a few niggly things. It gives you a decent image, but I always find it leans slightly towards the green. I found that the contrast it displays when converting a lookup table was honestly unrealistic. Waveforms display post lookup table and I would like the option to see it pre lookup table or post lookup table. The menu I found not perfect, not the most intuitive, but all of this it's subjective of course. Finally to my opinion and if great brightness, great build quality and huge feature list are important to you then the Portkeys LH5P is going to be a really good option for you. Areas in particular where I think it could improve are the user experience and then the way that it maps Luma values when converting log footage. But these are all software based things. As I mentioned, portkeys seem to be really active with their firmware updates. There's nothing wrong with the hardware side of things at all. And overall I'd say this is a really capable and compact little screen that's that has huge potential. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. I want to hear from you. What's your number one choice of monitor that I simply have to check out? Please let me know in the comments section. I've now filmed hundreds of videos about videography and audio on this channel, of which YouTube has picked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. <laughs>